Hello, and welcome to your first video homework of the school year. This video is just going to be a brief introduction to myself, my teaching ideas, and some of the technical stuff in our class. Feel free to share any of this information with parents or guardians. They can come and sit and watch with you if you'd like. So, I am Mr. Stewart, and this year I'm going to be teaching physics and AP biology. I grew up way down south in Phoenix, Arizona. This is actually the house that I grew up in over here. Um, Phoenix is not a very enjoyable place, or at least it wasn't for me. I found it uh, oppressively hot, and the city was very boring and uninteresting to me. There are some nice mountains in the middle of the city, but for the most part, Phoenix is a big, flat expanse with very few trees that extends many miles uh, off into the horizon. And I'm very happy that I have moved here to Portland uh, about seven years ago. I originally got my bachelor's in education from Arizona State University, and I focused there on biology education. Um, and since moving to Portland, I got my master's of science at Portland State University in general curriculum and instruction. What I'm really proud of is that over the last two years, I've been doing a fellowship down at Stanford University. It's called the Hollyhock Fellowship um, with a couple of the other teachers here at Franklin, Miss Farrow and Miss Joe. And down there, we've been meeting every summer with um, about 100 other teachers from across the country, uh, working to improve our ability to teach. Um, and also this year, I'm going to be working toward getting my national board certification, um, which is a fairly prestigious certification process. Uh, mostly, you'll just see some paperwork that I'll need to uh, fill out because I'll be recording a lot of videos of me teaching in our class interactions. So I've been teaching for about six to seven years, depending on how you calculate it. Um, I initially started with my student teaching and substitute teaching um, back in Arizona, uh, mostly in high school, uh, and mostly teaching biology classes. When I first moved up to Portland, uh, I was a special education teacher in elementary classes, which was really interesting and not really what I was prepared for. Um, I did that for a year. Uh, a year after that, I went down to Oregon City High School and taught special education at high school, a whole bunch of different subjects. After Oregon City High School, I moved over to Franklin. I've been here for five years. I initially started off teaching physics and chemistry, environmental science, and again, special education. I did special education for two years and in the second year I also taught biology but between years three and five so for the past three years I've only taught biology and AP biology and now this my sixth year I'll be teaching physics for the first time in about five years and I'll be teaching AP bio again so I wanted to share with you a little bit about my values and philosophy of teaching I wholeheartedly agree with Obama here science rocks and I feel very fortunate that I get to teach science every day. In making this video, I was trying to ask myself, why do I get up every day and come to school? Why do I feel motivated to continue to be a teacher? First, I feel that science is, is so important, that it's a tool and a skill. It's not just a set of facts and ideas about how the world works, but it's, it's this ability that people have to help them understand the world. So. Regardless of whether or not you want to become a scientist, learning science is a way to help you understand how various things work around you. And it's a skill that you'll be able to take forward uh, in all of your life experiences. Uh, it doesn't have to be the super rigorous uh, scientific method that you use on a daily basis, uh, but it's a way of thinking and reasoning through observations and evidence in order to come to some sort of explanation of how things work. A big part of what I feel my purpose as a teacher is, is to focus on equity. Our society is not the most fair and equal for every citizen. And so I feel it is part of my purpose to give a more equitable experience for my students in order to counteract the inequalities that exist in our society. Also, I want to help to develop a community of learners. I feel I am still a learner. I am going to be a lifelong learner, and I want to have people around me that 
are also engaged in learning. And I feel it is extremely important to have a group of humans, when they come together, to develop this community, this friendship, and these bonds, and that these bonds help us to learn and grow as individuals. I feel specifically I am a high school teacher because I love to understand the perspectives of my students. I love to get to know how you all think and how you put ideas together and what your experiences are in your lives. That is a very powerful benefit that I get from being a teacher. So, on to some more technical information. In class, I talked to you guys about the Remind service. A lot of you probably got the Remind message uh, to be able to watch this video in the first place. If you ever need to email me, uh, the best email to address is teach.stuart at gmail.com. Uh, that one comes directly to my cell phone, so I can get notified uh, whenever you send me a message. You can also check my website for any updates on any class work, homework assignments, um, any documents that I share. It'll always be there. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm at teach underscore Stuart. Um, and also... Uh, Whenever we have tutorials, it'll always be in room 225. That's our normal classroom. So that Remind service. Um, I also want to open that up to parents. So not just students can sign up for the Reminder texts, uh, but if a parent or guardian also wants to be reminded of when what homework um, is being assigned, um, or if they want to be able to contact me uh, through text message, feel free to sign up. Um, there is a contact sheet that I gave you, which has the class code um, on it, and you just text the number 81010 with the message at, and then whatever the class code is, and that signs you up for that class's um, uh, text message reminders. So for some of the homework assignments, um, especially for AP Biology, there are going to be a lot of homework videos similar to this one. What I want you to do um, for those homeworks is to take a page of Cornell notes. You may have experience with Cornell notes in the past. You may not like them because the teacher had you do them in a very specific orderly way that didn't work for you. Um, Cornell notes are very open, um, but they do have some key features that I would like you to uh, follow through with. The main thing is to divide the page into two sides. When you're first going through whatever notes, reading, video that you're doing, you take your normal notes in however you want to take them in the normal way in the right-hand column. So do the entire notes the first time over here in this right-hand column. After you go through the notes, re-watch the video, skim through the materials, um, but the second time you go through the information, I want you to be a, a little bit metacognitive. I want you to put down your thoughts, your reflections, what questions you might have, draw some pictures, do something extra um, to tie together these other ideas that you did the first time you took your notes. As you go through a second time, put those ideas over in this left-hand column. And then the last feature of Cornell Notes is that after you've done your homework, possibly even the next day, maybe when we first come into class, you can even wait until you're sitting in my class the next day, um, I want you to look over your notes and then write a summary at the end. Put in this last summary down here at the bottom as a way to refresh your memory and sort of conceptualize all of the thoughts that you had um, as you were doing the homework video. If you do your notes like this, well, one, I will be able to give you credit for them, and also you'll learn a lot more than if you just take notes doing the one normal notes that you would do otherwise. The extra steps really help to solidify the information in your brain. Okay, last thing. I want to tell you about my grading system because it is um, weird. Um, I don't like ranking students or giving points um, because I feel that students then focus more on how many points did you get? Like, oh, I only got an 87. How can I get three more points to get it to up to a 90? Um, they're focused more on points and not on the actual learning. So I try to distance um, our class as much as possible from a points and reward system. So instead, I just um, grade each assignment on this scale over here. An assignment either shows that you are highly proficient at whatever that assignment was aiming towards, uh, that you are proficient, 
or possibly that you are close to proficient, or if it's really not very good, or if you're just missing it. If you didn't do the assignment, you'll get a developing proficiency. So in Synergy, when you check, most of the assignments will be listed like this, HP, PR, CP, or DP. Um, you want everything to be PR or HP in order to pass the class. When it comes to your report card, um, that's the only time that you'll see an A, B, C, or an F grade um, in my class. So the way it works is that individual assignments will be graded with this grading scale. And all of the individual assignments that are in one main standard, like one big unit of the class, all those assignments get averaged together into each of the main standards. Your report card has to be all HPs or PRs on those main standards in order to pass. If you have a CP or a DP on any of the main standards, now you can have a CP or DP on an individual assignment, but as long as the average for the standard is PR or above, you will pass. So if you get any CPs or DPs on any main standard, you get an F in the class. As long as you have PRs or above, you'll get a C, B, or an A. And the way that those breakdowns is if you have mostly PRs, you'll have a C. If you have mostly PRs, but 25% or more are HP, you'll get a B. And if you have mostly HPs, you'll get an A. And remember, no CPs, no DPs on any main standards because that'll drop you automatically down to an F. So I know that may seem like uh, a very high standard to meet, uh, but it's really not. As long as you are actually doing most of the assignments, you'll be getting PRs on everything, so that's an automatic C. Um, and if you're doing them and actually putting in effort, then you will have an HPs on most assignments. It really comes down to if you just skip out on assignments, that brings you down to an F. So work with me, um, I'll always be here. Um, I don't have due dates, you can continue to turn in assignments up until the last day of the semester, and you can also redo assignments after you've turned them in to get a higher grade. Um, I, I'll continually accept uh, work and I will not mark it down as long as you're demonstrating that you understand the material. All right, so that's the end of this video. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in class with some wonderful questions. Bye. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. Gonna find.